Just hug your neighbour. Hug your neighbour. Hug okay. your neighbour, that would be good. Um, you, you're all right? You're you doing okay? Yeah. Excellent. Good, I'm glad to hear it. Good, good, good. Again, all right. Well, maybe if we've got time. Um, okay, so uh, without further ado, I think we should uh, welcome back to the stage the director and star of Evil Dead, Fede Alvarez and Jane Levy. Take a seat. Do you want to take a seat? Grab a, grab a seat over there. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks uh, for having us. And welcome to London as well. Uh, you Thank guys you. okay? You doing all right? Yeah. I'm Excellent. doing great. Excellent. Um, I suppose to get the ball rolling, Fede, can you just tell us how this all came about? Uh, how did how did this all start? Um, I think for me it all started with a with a short movie. I did a three hundred dollars uh, alien invasion movie back in Uruguay um, called Panic Attack, and, and that turned into you know this kind of a, a hit online and YouTube, and and find its way to Hollywood somehow and, and kind of the next morning after I uploaded to YouTube I got 150 emails from Hollywood saying you know we want to meet you whatever and it was awesome it was really incredible and um, kind of one week after that I, I went there and I met a lot of people but I'm a Sam Raimi fan since Darkman came out and and so when I met him it was definitely the guy that I wanted to make a movie with and we started discussing about you know making a movie based on the short first and almost at the same time he, he offered me Evil Dead he thought that uh, that it was good to be the right guy to to bring that movie back to a new to for a new generation, and that's how kind of, kind of how it started. I asked him if he had anything in mind, if he knew what he wanted to do, and he said, "Oh, I, he said no. You're the director. You tell me." He said. <laughs> and uh, and all he had was the movie. He said, "Like that, the movie is there. You can you do what you want." And uh, and we started discussing ideas and uh, what we're going to do and how we're going to bring that movie back to a new audience, right? And that's how kind of how it started. That was uh, two years and a half ago. And, more. and Jane, uh, at what stage of the uh, of the project did you get involved? At the very end. I mean, or not the very end. <laughs> <laughs> You're here. Yeah, it was a stone ball. <laughs> but I, I mean, I, I was cast in this movie just a couple weeks before we started shooting. Um, originally, someone else was playing the part of Mia, and she dropped out, and I was really excited because I had heard about the project, and I really wanted to be a part of it, and I was totally willing to audition for any of the parts. Um, hello. <laughs> I don't know. Should, we should bring the volume down a little bit. Maybe if that's all right. Sorry. That's good direct. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, the invoice. When the actress dropped out, I went in and auditioned, and it was actually one of the fastest processes. That word? <laughs> I had. Um, uh, I think within a week, I knew I had the part. I went in two times, and they called me, and I was really excited. Fantastic. Is a is a horror film something you've always wanted to do? Um, I wouldn't say it's something I've always wanted to do. It wasn't something I didn't I didn't didn't not want to do either. <laughs> okay, I've had a couple of drinks before. <laughs> um, <clears throat> sorry, but when I read the script, I got really excited, and I really really wanted to be in this movie. And I pursued it before even my agents had sent me the script. I heard about it, and then I asked them to send it to me, and they were they were hesitant because, of course, they want they just want their clients to be the leads of everything. And, I, and the the part was already taken, and so they wanted I wanted to audition for the other parts. Anyways, when I read it, I thought if I was going to be a part of a horror film, which sounded all of a sudden intriguing to me after reading the script, this is the one to do. And. Um, it's like the horror of all. I, the script was just so ridiculous. It just kept getting worse and worse. And I was like, <laughs> I mean, worse in a good way, I guess. Um, and I and I and I wanted to be a part of it. Fantastic. And on a on a sort of day to day basis, Sam, because Bruce Campbell, as we saw at the end, is producer and Sam Raimi. How how closely did you work with them? Oh, I mean, Bruce was um, like all all of them. They're like. 
they're the producers, so they're there all the time, right? Of course, the three of them were involved since the beginning um, when when I delivered my first draft. Uh, first of all, of course, signing off on whatever take we had, and um, and then of course, you know, giving us notes during the you know every time we deliver a draft, they give their uh, they give us their ideas of you know what we should improve and what's good and what's and what's not so good, and um, and then if, yeah, basically, I mean, I think the most important part was uh, I guess Bruce Campbell being in the in the casting room with me. So when Jaden came in and when everybody came in, so Bruce was sitting next to me. So he, he kind of knew, he could tell who was ready for the role and who wasn't, right? Sometimes we will see good actors and Bruce will go like, no way. <laughs> like, he's not ready. <laughs> and because it's, uh, as Jane knows, it's very, these movies are very hard to make and very demanding for the actors. And, um, and some people, you will ask them if they did anything you know, tough or physical. And we are like, yeah, once I jump over a wall, <laughs> You're like, yeah, get out of here. So, um, so Bruce was great. It was a great help during that process. And then uh, during the shooting, they kind of uh, nobody wanted to be on set. I think they were they were very respectful of uh, of the process. They thought the only way to make a good movie is to empower the director and give him the right to to write the movie and direct the film and uh, have their way. I mean, they they had producers in the past. They, Sam did, and and even Rob is producer. They had studios over them telling them what to do and changing their movies and, and they know that's the worst thing that can happen for to a movie so this time they decide to just give all the uh, freedom to the filmmaker and I'm, I'm blessed for that so uh, how long did you shoot for it was yes <laughs> for, it was a, a, a 70 days shooting that's insane it's like three months and a half shooting and Jane how did you survive that <laughs> I mean the prosthetics the blood everything how, how I mean I don't know I, I do remember one day driving to set maybe three quarters of the way through and really seriously strategizing my runaway plan and like <laughs> how I was like not going to finish this movie because I did not want to but uh, I did eventually <laughs> <laughs> How did um, Fede? How did you sort of, you know, structure the shoot? Did the uh, sort of makeup and, and possession increase throughout? Did you sort of give it a hard stuff first of all, and then an ease off? <laughs> well, we shot something that was really helpful as an actor, especially my role, who goes through my character goes through three very distinct stages: junkie, demon, action hero. Um, <laughs> we shot the film in order, mostly because of continuity, the blood levels once the blood blood started happening, it'd be hard to go backwards for wardrobe and makeup and such. So it, it was helpful as an actor. I didn't have to do that much jumping, jumping back and forth between those stages. We started off with the beginning of the movie, and we finished with that blood rain. Wow. Congratulations. Um, I suppose we should, uh, we should open the... Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. It's a huge achievement. Um, we should open things up to the floor. Uh, There's a gentleman yeah. standing up. I'm assuming that means yeah. he'd like the to ask the first guy question. In the back. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Right, okay. Listen, right? One of my favorite Beatles tunes, yeah? Strawberry Fields. What? <laughs> it's a classic Beatles tune. Uh, yeah, okay, that's a Now, song. if I were to come along and try to replicate that... What would happen? Is would it be popular? I don't know, dude. So the question is, how do you feel trying to do a movie, a remake of a movie, two movies in fact, one and two, Evil Dead, which are absolute classics? Did you feel comfortable? Did you feel nervous? Did you feel up to it? And I have to say, okay, loaded, um, I like what I saw this evening. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> just, just to give you I a guess. bit of confidence. I thought you were going into a rampage after so, 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 so. this movie. <laughs> okay, good. Um, it's a good question. I mean, it's uh, the thing is that we never really, uh, at least personally, I never thought I was uh, remaking anything. Uh, that's why I didn't want to bring the character of Ash back, because you, you don't remake God. You just you, you don't do that. So it was, it was something that uh, that's why I think they decided to make the movie. To also, I, I don't think Sam and and Bruce and Rob wanted to do that either. So 
we just want to make a new Evil Dead. We, I, that's why I think we changed the title to, um, we, exactly, we didn't want to make a cover song, like you were saying. Uh, that would have been terrible. And we just decided to make a new story, new characters, um, but it kind of the same themes, right? A lot of the same themes and a lot of ideas from the original film, but it was just a new Evil Dead. I mean, this movie, if you, if you want, you can watch this movie as a little bit as a sequel, in a way, to the first one, where the car is still there. It's the same cabin. You know, somebody bought it ages ago. Um, you know, very cheap, probably, because a lot of people died there. <laughs> and, um, and then, you know, 30 years later, this movie happened. I mean, you can see it that way. You can see it as, as a remake, because there's a lot of ideas in the first one that are here, too. So, like I was saying today, it's kind of a, it's kind of a requel. <laughs> That's a what requel. it is. Can we get another question? Maybe something from this side. Uh, I've got a couple of guys on the front here. Thank you very much. You, sir? I just want to say that was a really good film. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Um, a question's to Jane. Okay. <laughs> you again. <laughs> Jane, um, when I first watched the original Evil Dead, obviously there's images that sort of stick with me. I think everyone can agree with me with the pencil in the ankle. I'm just wondering, from your own experience shooting this film, was there any sort of uh, scenes that stuck with you once you'd finished that scene, and, you know, that stuck with you as you went home the day on set? Well, I think... <laughs> Everything sort of stuck with me um, shooting that movie. But if I were to talk about the original, I love um, the trapdoor stuff so much. I think it was so scary. And um, Shelly singing and her like eyes rolling in the back of her head. And I think that moment was the most excited I was to, I guess, recreate. And... Um, it made me, I think we were both really nervous that day <laughs> because it's such an iconic moment, um, but I feel honored to have been able to do that. Excellent. Uh, can we take a question from over here? Where's the mic? Uh, yeah, just for the gentleman there, yeah? Oh. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> Hi. Yeah, no, that was really good fun, actually. Thank you. Enjoyed it a lot. <laughs> um, it's, it's kind of a question that, that, going back to the trapdoor thing again, how much improvisation was there in terms of the crazy, batshit, possessed <laughs> rant, and, and how much of that was scripted? This is what's so cool about Fede. He wrote the script, but he wasn't, like, a super precious asshole about his words. <laughs> he let us... And like, first of all, he doesn't speak English. His first—I mean, he speaks English, <laughs> but it's not his first language. So he was very open to letting us um, put the words in our own way, the way we would say it, and and come up with stuff. I mean, he was always there, of course, directing, and he was very much behind every decision made. But he gave us freedom, and I think that's really important when you're trying to be making when you're trying to make something scary because you can't. It can't be contrived, just like I don't think humor can be. And um, <laughs> yeah, I can take it from here. Um, I got to try to do my best. There's a lot of English. improv, I think. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But she did a great job. Also, like when we, uh, there's one particular shot, not just in the trap door. We did the same thing for, you know, every time you see Mia in the cellar going crazy, you know, during the nail gun fight, and we cut into the cellar a lot during the movie to see what's going on with Mia as she's like progressing down into madness. And uh, I think we did a couple of. Shots Shots were like 10 minutes shots where it's just it's just a camera rolling. I'll probably will do a zoom in or something, and it will be just Jane going crazy. And first, you know, just suddenly is paranoia, and then is like uh, laughter, and she will laugh like a maniac, but and then I, like stop screaming, <laughs> screaming until after 10 minutes. Good, like please, can we cut? Now? Yeah, that's the funny part. I think when you watch it, it's no. like, can we stop now, no. please? That's the only way, I guess. You have to really try a lot of things to then then you can choose just one little bit. That it's going to be the good one. Huh? Also, the best one. Our our set was um, pretty open, where people would just shout suggestions. I remember one day I said, <laughs> "Don't tell that." No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So now you have to tell it. Okay, so like the most shameful thing I've ever said in my life is, why don't you come down here so I can suck your cock right away? And 
And I remember the DP was like, no, you have a cock. You're a demon, so say suck my cock, pretty boy. Yeah. And then I said it, and I felt like really bad because, about myself. Yeah. <laughs> I started asking everybody, because I don't speak English, like I started asking everybody, what would be the most offensive shit you can scream in this moment? So everybody from the crew was like, um, you know, why do you come down here so I can suck your cock, con, blah, 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 blah. It's all kind of weird cursing. So after we started shooting and started rolling the DP, scream one of the options, and then everybody was like, try this one. And she was like, what? <laughs> Just kind of screaming all kind of cursing. I'm going to have to cut the movie again with more cursing on that scene. <laughs> Fantastic. Should we take a question from that side of the room? There's a man on the aisle there. Hi. Um, so thanks for the film, because that was my favorite Tuesday night ever. Uh, <laughs> So my question is about how you go through the, the sort of visual effects process, because obviously it's really visual effects heavy. So do you have an idea in your mind already formed of what you want to see, and then you ask your team to like make it happen, or you know, do you ask them what's possible, or do you just tell them to do something crazy? Uh, I mean, it is a, it's definitely a collaboration with all the teams, and. Um, but uh, you know, the rule was no CGI, right? Like, okay, we cannot solve it with CGI. We have to do it practical. So it's very easy to write. And then she cut her arm off. It's very easy to write that line. It's very hard to shoot it. Uh, particularly the way I want to shoot it. I want to do just one shot that doesn't cut away. That start very wide and just start going and going and going until she cuts it. So and um, so. We, because a lot of these things haven't been done before, uh, usually teams will come up with, okay, we can try this and that and that, but uh, I love the whole uh, visual effect universe and how to create those illusions on camera, and uh, I'm a big fan of magic tricks, and so I really want, uh, we did a lot of research on, 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 on you know, on magicians on stage and how to how to do certain things, and um, so I was, I was providing a lot of crazy solutions that sometimes they would go like, you're nuts, that's never going to work, and, and sometimes they would go like, yeah, let's go for it now. Uh, I think the tube down the, the, tro the throat, that was something that I wanted to do and I, I suggest the idea to them and they go like, well, we can try that and you know, that was, that was a Olivia's tube face. going up her throat, but the vomit itself, we hide it, we'll hide the tube that was shooting blood hitting an umbrella and then coming out. Um, the arm thing, again, I figured if we have somebody hiding behind the shelf and having another arm there and a crazy prosthetic connecting two persons, we'd be able to, to do that. Um, so with all kind of tr tricky stuff that it was very hard to do. I mean, the sh that shot of Natalie going for the arm, that's just one day of shooting, just to do two shots. One shot, reset, which is you have to glue the arm back together, <laughs> which <laughs> takes like five, five hours of your day. And so we, we did a lot of those things, and it was it was a lot of fun. It was it was scary sometimes uh, because when you push with something like that as a director, you go like, trust me, you know, hold my hand. Are we going to go with this non-CGI thing, and it's going to be awesome? And then suddenly, we're doing the tongue thing, and Jane is there. She's like, it's so tricky. She's like, she has this fake tongue, and somebody's puppeteering the tongue from behind the camera with some strings, and it's moving, and it looks so fake and bad, and it's embarrassing for everybody on set. And everybody's looking at me like, yeah, great idea, and I'm CGI. <laughs> and like, trust me, trust me, it's gonna work. And then after two hours of Jane just there with the mouth open, trying to figure out what's going on, then at the end, you know, you choose the right moments in the cut, and I think the scene works in the movie, right? But in the moment where you do it, sometimes it doesn't work as well. So that that's. That, that's the beauty and curse of, of practical effects. Okay, let's have a couple more questions. Uh, maybe something else on this side. Uh, what have we got? We've got a couple of people down here in the fourth row or so, if you can get the mic over that way. Uh, hi. Yeah, I uh, love the film. Uh, I'm just thinking, there was obviously some disgusting shit in that film, <laughs> but um, out of the first three films, is there a scene that you wish you'd come up with, like you watch and you think, oh, damn, wish I'd done that? Oof. I don't know. Um, so many. The mirror scene, you know, there too? Yeah. When he suddenly comes out of the mirror, such a clever idea, and it's so cool every time I see it, I always... Even if I know it's coming, it always surprised me how some of the guy comes out of the of the uh, of the mirror. Um, the whole hand and any of that to the craziness of the hand. He, I would have never done it in this film. I think I was tempted to do it, but I thought it was going to be a little bit too far for the tone of the film. Um, that and I guess um, what else? Um, there's so many moments in the under three Evil Dead movies, right? Uh, but th those are probably a couple of my favorite ones, and 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 probably from the from the first film. 
Oh, there's so many things, I don't know. The Pantheon Bian call, I should have repeat that. I couldn't do it because it was already done, and I want to come up with my own ones, but the Pantheon and Bian is definitely one of those. Oops, I think there's a question just next to you, actually. Boston Mike's in the middle. <laughs> Strawberry Fields is a <laughs> favourite song by the Beatles. Uh, no, um, a bit of a, a funny uh, throwaway question. Um, is that Sam's genuine Oldsmobile at the beginning, or is it just a prop? No, no, it's a, I mean, there's one, there's just one car. I mean, if I would have done that to Sam's car, he would have killed me. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, they would have been impossible would have to, to, to paint it all over. We were trying to get one of it was actually funny, we, I mean, there's, his car is in Detroit, and it was tricky to get it, and, um, because he was shooting Oz, and he was going to use it. And, um, and also, but, but we knew that it was like 10 replicas of the car on the sunny lot because they did like 10 of those cars for the Spider-Man's movies because it's never his Spider-Man movie. But they did like 10 replicas exactly of the car. We were trying to get one of those, but it was impossible to ship it from, from um, it was just too tricky to ship it from uh, LA to New Zealand. So we had to find the same model in New Zealand. We went around trying to find it. We finally find a car and it was this collector. And he had it like out of, you know, out of the factory. It was like shiny and beautiful and he was like yeah you know he really took care of the car and everybody from the movie buying like yeah okay thank you yeah we're gonna really take care of the car <laughs> and just two seconds later it was all fucked up and it's great it's just so sad for me but uh, it wasn't the same car but it's the same model yes but it, it's like two years different from that one very good should we take a question from the back of the screen okay uh where have we got yeah, over here. Thank you. Okay, first of all, that was unnecessary. Um, but my question, uh, I, I think probably most of us here have got really fond memories of the first time we watched Evil Dead. So I wanted to ask about, to both of you, uh, what, what's your kind of experience of the first time you saw any of the Evil Dead films? My answer is really lame, so maybe I should go first. But um, I didn't see the movie until I got the part. Um, <laughs> I hadn't even heard of it. Uh, <laughs> I'm 23 years old, okay? It came out seven years before I was born. Um, I, but but that being said, I I, I didn't want to watch it before my audition because I was nervous that somehow I was going to get it in my head that I had to like recreate something or I had to like live up to something which I guess I sort of still had to do, but I didn't want to watch it before the audition, and I watched it in my friend's house on a projector screen on their concrete wall in Los Angeles last year, and it made me like way more excited to be a part of this after I'd seen the movie. It was terrifying to me. Like I'm a really big fraidy cat when it comes to horror films in general. It was so scary. And it was so bizarre. Like it's the most, it's the weirdest horror film ever. And it's charming. And I, I thought the 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 camera was amazing. And like the shot, I just thought it was. It, it, I I was really happy that I liked it because I was gonna make it. That for me, it was uh, just, I was 12, and I went to the video store, was done with all the Nightmare on Elm Street and, and Friday 13 back then. This is 1990, and I, I went to the video store, I asked, for the guy, I asked the guy, give me the scariest stuff you have, come on. And he was like, you're a kid, come on, beat it, you're 12, and I'm going to give you the hardest stuff. And I, would really, I was really pushy, like, come on, yeah, come here every day to rent movies, give me some. And he gave me Evil Dead. He was like, you know what, you want to see a real, a real horror movie? Take this, take it, run. And I took it, went home, wait for my parents to leave, and I watched it with a friend of mine, and we were so scared. And we were two buddies, so we were trying to pretend like, yeah, this is nothing. <laughs> and we were terrified, and, and, and it, that movie haunted me for ages. It, it really, like, the first time I saw it, I didn't enjoy it at all. I was, like, so terrified by it. And, you know, when you're 12, uh, the tree rape is not something that, you know, you're trying to l understand sex still when you're 12. But back in 1990, now they are, I think they're already having sex when they're 12. But uh, back then, um, it wasn't like that, and it was really, really disturbing in many levels. Okay, uh, probably last couple of questions now. So something else on the left-hand side, maybe one of these two chaps down the front here, just in the front row here. 
Where are you going? <laughs> yeah, you're good. Get out of here. Thanks for coming. Goodbye. <laughs> Bye. 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 Um, yeah, so <laughs> going back to the original, um, the original movies, um, obviously by Evil Dead 2, that's when it, the humour was more noticeable and it turned into more of a comedy instead of the sly humour. Do you think this, this reboot series could ever go into that kind of more noticeable comedy or did you want to keep it the same tone as this one? I think it... Um, it I think it has yeah, the, definitely the movie and the, and I guess the saga itself has the potential to go to so many places. Um, I think if we just go for the comedy horror for the next one, it just would be too um, predictable. And um, what? <laughs> Anyways, I, 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 would, I would be if that the case. I think it would be just doing. I mean, I'm writing the, the movie now, and, and if we will be doing that, I think we will be doing a lousy job because everybody will see that coming like from miles away. And so. So, and the idea was is always as a filmmaker is to su surprise the audience. You want you know keep surprising people with the storytelling and, and the movies. So I guess uh, it's definitely going to go to a different place. And it's going to be different from this. That's that's a fact. It's just I think it has to be. Every Evil Dead movie is different from the previous one, uh, and and so we have to keep doing that. I think this one really surprised people that were thinking it was going to be one thing, and then kind of through the ride of the movie, you experience that is something quite different from probably what you were expecting and, um, and that's something that I, I hope we can manage to keep doing right on the on the next one it has to be something insane and something that you never see coming so if we just do the comedy horror thing it just will be too predictable maybe okay and we should probably wrap this up so let's take the final question and let's make it a really really good one uh, the gentleman just there in the centre there if we can get the microphone over to chat with the glasses there thank you Thank you. Um, just one question. Um, there's obviously a lot of gore and grue in that. Uh, are there any scenes that you filmed that you haven't didn't actually make it into the cut because it's so gruesome? And on that note, does that mean you might release an unrated, harder cut on DVD or Blu-ray? <laughs> no. I'm trying to imagine what would be the scene that that would be way yeah. more gory than this that couldn't make it to the cut. Um, no, they're, 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 thank God, this is our vision. This is what was in the script, uh, and uh, and that was this was this is my director's cut. There's really no uh, censorship of any level, and this on um, this cut, I think we just had to trim some frames out of some of the shots, like the tongue. Instead of exposing to x amount of frames, we have to remove 10 frames or something like that. And 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 on the very graphical moments of the film, that was the only thing that the censorship asked us to do. Um, so there's no there's no more gore than when you see this. The, 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 what you saw here, I mean, it's gonna be probably an extended version at some point where where everything I shot is in the movie but it's not there, those are scenes that we removed just because to, to, just to keep the pace of the movie going and um, but it, it's interesting too it's always interesting to watch what was the original you know you know story and its full form and it's probably I guess in some point they're gonna release that it just has more you know background on the characters and I had a couple of more scenes on the middle of the movie which is pretty interesting to watch but this is definitely my favorite cut of the film. Great. And oh. just before we say goodnight, is there anything you could tell us about a potential sequel? <laughs> well, a little bit of what we're saying. I mean, we're gonna. We want to definitely continue and follow the story of Mia and find out where she's gonna go and what's gonna happen to her after that. If she's gonna go back and do drugs, probably. <laughs> after that, after that experience, I will go back to smack like this. Um, <laughs> and then, uh, but we'll see about that and see where she goes and uh, and what kind of film it is. We right now we. I think we um, have a, we have a meeting with Sam, um, kind of a couple of weeks from now, to really sit down and 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 really figure it out. We have a pretty, I have at least at least a pretty good and clear idea of what I want to do. I just don't know if it's, it's, if it is something they want to do. So I have to agree with them. And, and if we do, I think uh, that that's probably when we start writing it, right? Literally, huh? Jane, is there anything you want to see Mia do in a in a potential sequel? I mean, 
I enjoyed kicking ass at the end of that movie, and it'd be cool to be able to do that sort of thing instead of being tortured the whole time. <laughs> but I think I should probably think about it a little bit more. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you ever so much for joining us. Um, and that just leaves me to thank uh, to Fede Alvarez and Jane Levy, uh, the star and director of Evil Dead. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Congratulations. Well, there you go. What a fun time. That was a hoot. Such a thrill. Yeah, my goodness.